Welcome back. My name is Eli Unger Sargon, and this is the second in a series of videos on how to improve your virtual presence during a video conference. When the pandemic really kicked into gear and much of my social life shifted to Zoom and FaceTime and Skype, it occurred to me that I could use some of the skills that I had gleaned from my work as a filmmaker to improve my virtual presence in these spaces. And then I got to thinking about how nice it would be if everyone I was video conferencing with would be able to benefit from these techniques as well. So here we are. In the last video, we talked about how to improve your presence if all you have is the built-in camera and mic on your laptop or desktop. We discussed the importance of choosing a quiet space with a reasonably interesting but not too messy background. And we talked about the importance of getting the camera to eye level and your mouth within a few feet of the computer. The aesthetic and technical principles that we covered in that video are applicable no matter how much you spend on gear. So if you haven't seen that one yet, I recommend that you watch that video first. In this video, I'm going to assume that you're willing to invest a little cash in your setup to make things look and sound better than what you can get from the built-in camera and mic on your computer. And just like in the last video, we're going to start with sound because improving your sound is the single biggest thing you can do to improve your presence in a video conference. The mics on most laptops and desktops are really not great. They're these little pinhole affairs that don't do a great job at reproducing the human voice. And as sound is the most rewarding improvement you can make to your virtual presence, the first place to invest is in getting a better mic. Now, the first decision you'll want to make when thinking about a mic is whether you're okay with the mic being in the shot or not. In an ideal world, I would argue that having the mic out of the shot in a situation like this yields a more natural presence, as you aren't visually reminding the people you're conferencing with of the technology that you're talking to them through. But if I were forced to choose between a mic in the shot with good sound or no mic in the shot with mediocre sound, I keep the mic in the shot every day and twice on Sunday. The simplest and least expensive way then to improve your sound is to go with a lavalier microphone. Lavs clip right onto your clothing, which gets them much closer to your mouth, and they produce a much better sound than the built-in mic on your computer. Lavs are small, which <laughs> under normal circumstances makes them more travel friendly, and by being physically closer to your mouth, even just that one foot closer, they sound better. This is the microphone on my laptop. Uh, the mic is now about, I'd say, 12 inches from my mouth. We're in a dry space. This is pretty much as good as it gets with a laptop microphone. You're now hearing my voice through the lav mic in a relatively dry space. The one thing to watch out for with these inexpensive lavalier microphones is that most of them won't plug directly into your laptop. You need a little adapter. The one that I'm going to recommend that I'll put in the description box below, you don't need an adapter for, but a lot of these cheaper uh, lavalier microphones that you can buy do require an adapter. Now there are some downsides to lav mics. The first being that if they aren't placed perfectly, they can pick up clothing rustle, which can be very annoying. The second is, they're usually omnidirectional, which means that they pick up sound from all directions. And if the room that you're recording in has lots of hard surfaces, they'll pick up some of those reflections. But a well-placed lab that connects directly to your computer is a really great and inexpensive way to dramatically improve the quality of your presence on a video conference. If you do find yourself in a situation where the only room you can conference from is very reflective, you may want to consider a dynamic microphone. Unlike the humble lavalier, which is usually a condenser mic, dynamic mics are larger and much less sensitive. What this means is that you can get the benefit of rejecting all of those echoey reflections that are ruining your sound. They also tend to have a warmer, fuller sound than condenser mics. These mics are what we associate with that NPR radio sound because that's what they use in radio studios. So this is the built-in laptop mic in a relatively reflective space. The mic is about 12 inches from my mouth. And this is a best case scenario for a laptop mic in a reflective space. 
So now you're listening to me through the lavalier microphone in a relatively reflective space. And uh, it's an omnidirectional lavalier microphone. They do make cardioid lavalier microphones, which will cut down a little bit on the reflections. And you can hear what an improvement this is over the built-in mic in the laptop. So now you're hearing my voice through a dynamic microphone in a relatively reflective space. And as you can hear, the reflections are really well controlled. Uh, and it just sounds a lot better than either the built-in mic in the laptop or the lavalier microphone. So what are some of the downsides of dynamic mics? Well, for one, you have a big honking mic in your shot, and for the sound to come across well, you actually have to keep it close to your mouth. It follows that you need a mic stand of some kind, which is positioned in such a way that you can comfortably talk into the mic. Having said that, if your room has acoustic issues, a dynamic mic is definitely the way to go. I'll link to some of the more popular USB dynamic mics that will plug directly into your computer's USB port in the description box below. So what about the image? How can we improve the quality of our visual presence without spending an arm and a leg? We all know that the cameras on our phones have been getting better and better. But video conferencing directly from your phone is less than ideal. First of all, the phone apps are never as fully featured as their PC counterparts. So for example, in Zoom, as of this recording, the phone and tablet apps don't let you see everyone in the conference on the screen at the same time. But more importantly, when you do these sessions through your phone, you'll end up holding the camera at a supremely unflattering angle and your hand will eventually get tired. So what I'm going to show you here is how to use your phone as your webcam on a video conference. In terms of placement, everything that we said in the last video about getting the camera at or slightly above eye level applies here as well. To accomplish that with your phone, what you're going to need is a selfie tripod. You'll want to place the tripod behind your computer so that the phone's camera is sitting just above the built-in webcam, and then you'll need to download an app to your phone and its drivers onto your computer. I've had pretty good luck with a $7 app called Epoch Cam, and I'll link that below. Once all of that is set up, You'll want to connect your phone through USB to your computer, launch your conferencing application of choice, and your phone should show up as a selectable source in the video settings. And boom, just like that, you're harnessing the superior camera in your smartphone to video conference, and you've improved your visual presence over what you could get from the built-in webcam. That's it for this video, folks. In the next video, I'll be covering some of the more advanced techniques that you can use to improve your virtual presence. I hope you found this useful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. If you want to be the first to know when the next video gets posted, go ahead and click on that little bell icon to be notified. If you have any questions or suggestions, feel free to pop them in the comment section below. And if you'd like to help support what I do here, you can rent or buy my films or even pitch in to the crowdfunding campaign for the film that I'm working on now. Links for all of that will be in the description box below. Thank you so much for your attention. Until next time.